This is the Perfect Pup Podcast, helping you build a better relationship with your pup, presented by Pupford. Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. It's going to be an interesting one. I learned a lot diving into why our dogs scoot on their butt across the floor. It's such a weird behavior. It can be slightly embarrassing if you have guests over and you don't really know why it's happening, but it can also be a sign of underlying health concerns. So let's dive into why dogs scoot, what you should do if your dog is scooting, what you shouldn't do, and of course, some ways we can prevent the scooting from happening. So let's get right into it. Very first disclaimer, this is a health issue. Anytime we are talking about kind of abnormal behaviors that your dog is exhibiting, it's important to be in contact with your vet. And if you have concerns, go talk to them. I'm not a vet and I don't know your dog, but your vet is a vet and they do know your dog. So talk to your vet if you have concerns. So your dog starts scooting across the ground. I've seen dogs do it everywhere. I've seen them do it on concrete, grass, hardwood floors, everywhere. Typically, the main reason your dog is scooting their butt across the ground is they have itchy and or full anal glands. So the next question is, what in the world are anal glands? You've maybe heard the term of needing to express your dog's anal glands, which basically means removing the liquid that is within your dog's anal glands. What are anal glands, though? Let's cover that. So your dog has what's called anal sacs and they are inside your dog's anus and they are filled with a kind of foul smelling liquid that's basically your dog's calling card. We talked in another episode about why dogs sniff each other's butts. It has to do with the liquid that is in your dog's anal sacs and gets expressed typically when they go to the bathroom, specifically when they go poop. So you have the fluid in the glands, it gets pushed out through a duct and then out your dog's rear end when they go number two. But sometimes what happens for various reasons is the liquid does not come out as part of your dog going number two. And when that happens, you get a backup and it's typically in the ducts from which the fluid goes from the anal sacs out your dog's rear end. It gets backed up and that causes pain, inflammation, discomfort. Think of it like if you had the feeling of snot in your nose, but you couldn't ever get it out. It'd be really bothersome. It would probably make your nose itch and it would probably lead you to do some strange things to try and get that out. And that's why our dogs scoot. They have backups or some type of issue with their anal glands and the liquid not being expressed and those anal sacs fill and it's uncomfortable, it's itchy, it's annoying. So they scoot. They're trying to provide some just comfort and itch relief, right? Like just like when you had a rash as a kid, your mom said, don't itch your rash. You probably itched it anyways, because even if it made it worse, it still felt good for a few seconds to get that itch relief. And it's similar to why our dogs scoot. Additionally, they may be trying to just express their anal glands on their own through some, you know, movement on the ground in that area. Other behaviors and things you might see if your dog is having anal gland issues, of course, the scooting, but also you might see them just generally itching or scratching at that area, licking or biting that area. And it's often at the base of their tail. You might see them straining to poop. You might see that swelling and redness, uh, and you might see or smell more bad breath, especially if they are licking that area. It's gross. This is part of being a pup parent, but we've got to cover these topics because even if you haven't experienced your dog scooting, I'm almost certain at one point in time in your dog's life, you will. So it's good to know why. Those are some of the associated behaviors. If you're seeing those variety of things, it's a high likelihood that your dog has anal gland issues. You should go to your vet. And typically all they need to do is express their anal glands, but sometimes there's other things they need to keep an eye out for. There are, though, other reasons why your dog might be scooting. These are definitely less likely, but they are things to be aware of. You might be causing anal gland issues if your dog is having their anal glands expressed too much. So if you take your dog to the groomer frequently, be sure to know if and how frequently they are expressing your dog's anal glands, because sometimes overdoing it causes more pain and issues. You know, that area is very sensitive and tender and too much happening there with the anal gland expression can actually cause problems. 
they may also just have irritation from grooming. If, if they are being buzzed down in that area near their butt, you might have almost like a razor burn type thing and your dog is just scratching, trying to relieve that razor burn itch. You also should be aware that scooting along the ground, your dog scooting on their butt can be a sign of more serious issues like parasites or worms. You'll often see things associated with that, like larva or eggs or actual worms in their poop. But again, this is why when you see your dog doing things that don't seem normal or their behavior is odd and it seems kind of health related, you should always go to your vet just to rule out any major issues. Um, it also can be just a sign of general allergies. If your dog is itching and scratching, you know, along their neck or their, their you know, the rest of their body, that might translate to them scooting on their butt because their butt is itchy as well. It can also be a sign of a urinary tract infection or a UTI that's more common in female dogs. And if that's the case, you'll see, you know, straining while they pee, you will see more frequent urination, uh, more licking in that area. So again, go to your vet, rule that out. And it could also just be your dog has a dirty bottom. Not to be weird, but if you couldn't use toilet paper, how would you try to clean your own butt? You know, think about how a dog works and lives and has to find solutions for things. You know, scooting along some grass maybe would clean it up down there. So what should you do if your dog is scooting? First thing is you should assess the area. So make sure that there's nothing stuck in there or unfortunately you've probably experienced this or seen, you know, dogs can get grass or hair or pieces of a stick or whatever it is stuck in their butt. So just rule that out first. Look at the area. Is it red? Is it inflamed? Is there blood or anything like that? And, you know, if it looks normal, the next step would be to just kind of keep an eye on this behavior. You know, if, it, if your dog scoots on their butt maybe once or it's very infrequent, it might just be kind of a one-off thing and you're all right. But if it's happening frequently, if they're doing it on a constant basis, if they're scooting for extended periods of time, it is probably a clear sign that you should take your dog to the vet. So that's the main thing. You know, if your dog is scooting a lot, take them to the vet. Rule out health concerns. Here's what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't interrupt your dog. You shouldn't scold them. You shouldn't punish them for scooting, even if it made a mess or their gross smells got over your new carpet. Punishing your dog or scolding your dog for scooting across the ground, number one, it's not going to accomplish anything. And it's just going to cause stress, anxiety, confusion, because for them, it's a natural behavior. They're trying to find a solution for a potential health concern and you scolding or punishing them or trying to stop them mid scoot. It's not going to accomplish anything. So let them finish their scoot, assess the area, keep an eye on how frequently it's happening, and probably above all, take them to the vet. So that leads us to our last point of how can you prevent anal gland issues? How can you prevent scooting as much as possible? As mentioned, it can just be a common behavior. It's kind of part of a dog's life. It might happen from time to time, but there are some things you can do. The kind of main thing would be to keep an eye on your dog's diet. The gut microbiome plays such a huge role in our dog's overall health. And especially when we're talking about something with their anal glands and anal sacs and those types of things, it's so closely associated to their diet because what they're eating is what they're pooping out and that can be causing some anal gland issues. So as much as is feasible for your lifestyle and your financial situation, feeding a high quality diet is important. And if you are noticing some more anal gland issues or more scooting, you can try to do things like adding more fiber, just because again, that, that natural movement of your dog going number two is going to help ideally, and in most cases, flush out the liquid that is in their anal glands, their anal sacs. So you can add things like pumpkin, you can add things like apples, broccoli, and also supplements, you know, there are many supplements out there that are geared specifically towards the gut and your dog's stomach health. Uh, here at Pupford, we offer a couple options. We have Super Pup, which is formulated by Dr. Greg Sunvold, who I've had on the podcast before, very informative episodes about the gut and the microbiome and how that affects our dog's life. We also have a newer one called the Gut Health Plus Immunity, and it has some amazing ingredients that are you know, again, built specifically, put in there specifically to improve your dog's gut health. Because again, here's another kind of 
often cause for anal gland issues is if your dog is not having normal bowel movements, whether that's they're constipated or they're having a lot of diarrhea or loose stools, those things can all lead to the anal gland backups and that liquid not coming out when it's supposed to and turning into anal gland issues and scooting. Another important point is to keep your dog at a healthy weight. We've done a lot of episodes about the obesity epidemic of dogs, especially in the United States. It's something like around 50% are overweight or obese, and that just causes a whole host of health concerns. You have arthritis, you have health, you have heart issues, you have you know liver problems, but also it can translate to anal gland issues. So exercise with your dog, keep them at a healthy weight, don't overfeed them, don't let them free feed. It can just lead to so many health problems if your dog is overweight. And I know this is gonna slightly sound counterintuitive because of how, what I mentioned before that sometimes too frequent of anal gland expression can cause problems, but one way to prevent anal gland backups is to make sure that their anal glands are frequently being expressed. This one in particular, you need to talk to your vet. In most cases, your vet and or your groomer can do it for you, but if you want, it is something you can do at home. I'm gonna be very clear here though, you shouldn't just go out on your own and try and figure this out. You should talk to your vet. They can even show you in most cases and you can do it on your own. It's gross, It's it smells bad, It's you're putting your hand in your dog's butt, your finger in your dog's butt. Like it's it's kind of a gross experience, but it is something that you can do. But again, have direction from your vet. There you have it. That's why dogs scoot. The vast majority of times your dog scooting along their bum on the ground is because they have itchy or full or an issue with their anal glands and it needs to be assessed. So the next time your dog scoots across, again, don't stop them, let them do their thing, assess the area, keep an eye. If it's becoming frequent or seems problematic, definitely go talk to your vet. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something. If you have, if you did enjoy it, please share this. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on YouTube, leave a comment on YouTube. I try to respond to all of them. But other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.